Coming up on Hoosier Sports Night, Archie Miller is out as IU men's basketball head coach. And the women's basketball team looks to keep making history as they head to Texas for the NCAA tournament. This is Hoosier Sports Night. Hello and welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Jack Edwards, glad to be with you here today. Just a few blocks north of here sits Assembly Hall, which will play host to several March Madness games. Not taking part in the big dance, however, will be the Indiana Hoosiers, who extend their tournament drought to five years. After four seasons in Bloomington, IU decided the reign of Archie Miller had come to an end, biting the bullet on a $10 million buyout. Jackson Kinney has more. Thanks, Jack. Indiana University announced on Monday that the school has parted ways with now former head basketball coach Archie Miller after four seasons. The firing comes after Indiana ended this most recent season 12-15 and, and on a six-game losing streak including the loss to Rutgers in the Big Ten Tournament. Athletic Director Scott Dolson released a statement confirming the firing and that the school acquired private philanthropic funding to pay for Miller's buyout which cost just over $10 million. Miller replaced Tom Crean as head coach in 2017, and during his four seasons in Bloomington, the Hoosiers never played in an NCAA tournament game. Indiana was 67 and 58 overall during the tenure, and 33 and 44 in the Big Ten. A.D. Dolson stated that he will not form a formal search committee, but will find a new head coach himself with the help of consultants in the program and around the nation. Jack, back to you. Thanks, Jackson. The Indiana women's basketball team heads into the NCAA tournament with their best seeding in program history. For analysis of Hoosiers tournament chances, here are IUS TV beat reporters Andrew Fish and Will Trubshaw. The Indiana women's basketball team, you know, they're coming off a disappointing performance against Michigan State, their first game in the Big Ten tournament with an early exit. But the Hoosiers are taking on VCU now in the tournament. They're a four seed. What can Hoosier fans expect to see from IU as they look to bounce back and make a run in the tournament? Well, you know, I mean, I think we've seen all year, this has been a really fundamentally sound team. And I think in, in the Big Ten tournament, they kind of just got beat by a Michigan State team that was, you know, I think they were just a little more up to the, up to the task on that day. I don't really think that says much about how this, this team can perform in the NCAA tournament. I think, uh, you know, going into this matchup against VCU, the, the big key is going to be, can they get Ali Piper going? And I think too, you know, can they get Nicole Cardano Hillary going? You know, I, I think for the most part, the key has been uh, this season, or you can count on a Grace Berger and Mackenzie Holmes and whatnot to power the offense. I, you know, they're they're always they're reliable. They're sure they struggled the last few games here and there, but what saved IU in those games was having Ali Patberg and Nicole Cardano Hillary. It's just also whether it's men's, women's, NBA, WNBA, a one-dimensional team can't make a deep run in the postseason. So this, this IU team that has been so good against some of the lesser competition throughout the year, um, you know, putting the ball inside with Mackenzie Holmes, mid-range with Grace Berger, they need to figure out another way, especially perimeter offense. Starting off the, the tournament against VCU, if things go chalk, they'll uh, – eventually meet up with a great NC State team that beat South Carolina, uh, one of the best teams in the country there on an eight game win streak. They won the ACC tournament. Who for the Hoosiers is gonna need to step up if they're gonna you know, beat a potential NC State team or uh, you know, give them a challenge, make a run in this tournament? Right, well, yeah, I mean, again, you look at it, this, this uh, VCU game, VCU came into the, this coming into the tournament hot, they won four straight to win the A-10 tournament. So they're obviously a very good team. Gonzaga's got a really strong program. That's a team that IU could see in the round of 32 if they make it past uh, VCU. But I do agree with you. I think that this is a pretty favorable matchup until you get to that uh, matchup with the one seed uh, NC State in the, the Sweet 16. I think it's pretty realistic to think that if IU does make it through um, VCU and then most likely Gonzaga, um, I think... You know, that is a challenge. And again, you know, I think the thing 
that Indiana has really got to do is they've got to find no, they, they they have to make sure that more than anything, Mackenzie Holmes doesn't get shut down in the post. Yeah, definitely. And and to just keep hammering the point home, um, once you do get Mackenzie Holmes going, the three point shooting is going to be so important to kind of give her space because I felt like that game against Michigan State it felt like they were just letting IU shoot from the perimeter and they, they were just going to clog the lane. They were going to let anything inside. And that might be kind of a formula to beat the Hoosiers. So they have to be aware of that and an ability to kind of counter that um, going forward through the tournament. But definitely excited. We're definitely expecting this IU team to bounce back. And uh, for Will Trebshaw, I'm Andrew Fish. This has been IUS TV. The Hoosiers will play their first game in San Antonio, Texas on Monday at 2 p.m looking to continue a historic season. After a wait of over 450 days, the IU men's soccer team finally got back on the field at Armstrong Stadium for competitive action, taking on Michigan State on Monday. Final from Bloomington, Indiana. The Indiana Hoosiers taking down the Michigan State Spartans two goals to one. IU coming back from a first half deficit after conceding from a corner kick pretty early on in the match. Head coach Todd Yeagley said that he was not happy with the way his team opened up the match with a mixture of factors coming into play to make it a difficult start for the Hoosiers. Again, I thought we, we started slow. Um, really, our, our movement off the ball wasn't what we, we liked. The game was just... It was played at a pace that we don't want to play um, to start the game. And Vic hasn't played much. He's He's got a little bit of a, an infection in his mouth. He hasn't been sleeping. Um, so I felt like he, he was affected. And we just didn't start the game really bright with our movement offensively. Sophomore Victor Bezera continued his red-hot form, scoring his fifth goal on the season with a deflected effort that managed to squeak its way past the goalkeeper, giving IU the equalizing goal before later on Daniel Mooney scored yet another goal this season. His connection with Spencer Glass continues, scoring his second goal of the season to win the match for IU. Yeah, I mean, the ball had eyes to the back post. I don't know how it got through, but I was able to get a flick on it and, you know, the rest. It was some exciting time. IU got some strong performances from some players off the bench like Emerson Nieto and Nate Ward as freshmen. In addition to have Brett Beebe continue his role in the midfield, which really had head coach Todd Yeagley quite happy with his ability to work in that engine room with Joe Schmidt. I thought, you know, our engine room, as we call it, with Brett and, and uh, Joe Schmidt was really good all day. Even when we weren't playing with quite the pace that we wanted and conviction in the first half, I thought both of them were playing pretty well. I thought Brett... You know, as the game grew on, Joe's been a really good midfielder for us, as we, we need him to be. But Brett's taken on a much bigger role. And I thought BB had a really good game. One of my top three or four guys today. And IU has Rutgers up next in Piscataway on a short turnaround, four days. Going to look to try and get back healthy and fit before that match. But final here from Bloomington, IU moves 4-1 on the season with a 2-1 victory over the Michigan State Spartans. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Jack Edwards. The Hoosiers next travel to Piscataway to face off against Rutgers, seeking to maintain control of first place in the Big Ten. With the weather beginning to brighten up, both the men's and women's golf teams have been getting their seasons underway. The women's team is coming off of a weekend at the Briars Creek Invitational, hosted by the University of Charleston in Johns Island, South Carolina. The standout performance came from sophomore Valerie Clancy, who carded all three rounds in the 70s. Clancy would go on to shoot 15 over for the weekend, followed by seniors Angela Ong and Mary Parsons, who both finished at 19 over. For the men's side, they also competed in South Carolina for three days at the General Hackler Championship in Myrtle Beach. The men's team found good success, placing seventh out of 15 schools and had a top 10 player for the third straight tournament. The women traveled back to South Carolina in two weeks, and both squads are looking forward to competing at the new Foul Golf Course for the Hoosier Invitational on April 3rd. The Indiana women's soccer team hosted the Illinois Fighting Illini this past Sunday, entering the day third in the Big Ten. IOS TV soccer beat reporter Emma Watson has more. Despite coming into Bloomington with momentum, the Hoosiers fell to the Fighting Illini on Sunday 1-0 due to an Eileen Murphy goal that happened in the 50th minute in the second half. In the first half, the Hoosiers really dominated possession, controlling the ball in the midfield through players like Lunt and Luker. A free kick in the defensive half led to an Eileen Murphy goal that was headed into the box and sailed past Bethany Copel. The rest of the second half, the Hoosiers tried to come back, but unluckily, Sammy Sample was to proved to be too much of a force between the sticks. Sample currently leads all Big Ten goalies in save percentage and saves with 36 saves 
and eight saves on 15 attempts during the Indiana game. When asked about what to improve upon, Erwin Ben Vinicom had one thing in mind, maintaining possession. That just started, uh, we gave the ball away way too much, allowed them to attack. So I think that is going to be the main focus of actually having some sustained possession and, and being dominant with the ball. And I think that was the biggest problem today. So we're, we're definitely looking to improve that going into Wednesday. Unluckily for both Erwin Van Benekoff and his Indiana Hoosiers, the game against Michigan State University on Wednesday was postponed due to COVID cases in the Michigan State program. The game was rescheduled to March 31st in Bloomington at 1 p.m. That game will also be broadcast on Big Ten Network Plus. Losers now look to face the Wisconsin Badgers this Sunday. The game will also be broadcasted live on Big Ten Network Plus, so make sure to follow your Indiana Hoosiers as they take on the Wisconsin Badgers at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will also be giving you live in-game updates and highlights, so make sure to follow me at, at the Watts Watch on Twitter. For IUS TV Sports, my name is Emma Watson. Jack, back to you. Thanks, Emma. I was expected to resume action on Sunday against Wisconsin. Make sure to follow IUS TV Sports on Twitter for in-game updates and highlights. On March 11, 2020, IU baseball beat Cincinnati 6-2 at Bart Coffin Field. Little did they know it would be over a year before they would next step on that field again. The long-awaited return nearly took a tumble at the final hurdle. Here's Sean Neef with more from last weekend. For a moment, it seemed as though many players' worst fear was becoming a reality this past weekend. Only about an hour prior to the Hoosiers' first game of the season at Bart Kaufman Field, head coach Jeff Mercer announced that he had tested positive for COVID-19. Immediately, the two games set to be played that day were canceled. However, little time was wasted in rescheduling those games, as the Nittany Lions and the Hoosiers met twice on both Saturday and Sunday. Even without Mercer at the helm, the Hoosiers were dominant in their four-game series winning every single one of them. Saturday was a day to celebrate the Hoosiers pitching. Righty McCade Brown set a new school record with 16 strikeouts in a Big Ten game while striking out every Penn State starter in the process. Sunday, however, was a day for batting heroics. In what seemed to be the Hoosiers' first loss of the weekend, IU trailed by two at the bottom of the seventh inning before Grant Richardson added to his legacy here at IU with a walk-off homer in a 6-5 Hoosier victory. That momentum carried over into the final game where IU was victorious with a score of 2-1. After an unforeseen setback and some close calls, IU managed to complete their first four-game sweep in conference play since 2008. This sweep pushes the team's win total to seven straight, with their only loss being the first game of the season. Not too bad for a team without their skipper. Now back to you at the desk. Thanks for that, Sean. Cross country in the springtime is somewhat of an odd thought. But for IU squad, any chance to compete is a chance they'll take. Indiana Cross Country traveled to Stillwater, Oklahoma on Monday to compete in the NCAA National Championships. The women picked up 19th as a team, while the men placed 26th. Junior Bailey Hertenstein placed 28th, with it being the highest finish at the NCAA Championship for the Hoosiers. She was followed by teammates Sarah Schmidt, Hannah Stoffel, Manny Dalton, Abby Little, Jenna Barker, and Anna Barrett, respectively. Ben Veach led Indiana in the men's 10K by placing 73rd overall. Next across the line for the Hoosiers was Arjun Ja, Jake Gebhardt, Austin Haskett, Skylar Stidham, Ben Miller, and Dustin Horder, respectively. IU softball had a hot and cold weekend, with both series ending in sweeps. The Hoosiers dropped the first three games against Northwestern before sweeping three games against Rutgers to end the weekend 3-3. Three and three. The bats were cold against Northwestern, scoring just one run compared to the Wildcats 17. However, the bats got rolling on Saturday against Rutgers, as offense was the storyline in that series. The Hoosiers scored 25 runs against the Scarlet Knights, capped off by a walk-off winner in the 11th inning in the weekend finale. The next game will be the home opener against Michigan on March 26th. That's going to do it for our show for the week. Thanks so much for tuning in, as always. Don't forget to like our page, IOS TV Sports, on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter, at IOS TV Sports. For our entire production crew behind me, I'm Jack Edwards, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.